okay? Now, now, let me share with you what gave me such a bold, courageous attitude. Is I asked myself a question. See, when we go in, in different situations, all right, whenever we experience any of the diseases of attitude, fear, anxiety, apprehension, indecision, any of these types of things, what happens is when you see that perfect prospect and you want to execute your strategy, like, oh, I want to go talk to that guy. Man, well, what ends up happening is your brain, I call it the weakness, starts to spew all over you to protect you because you don't like to get out of your comfort zone. A muscle doesn't like to burn. It do, the lactic acid, when it builds up when you're working out, it burns, it's uncomfortable. That keeps a lot of people away from working out. They don't like the pain. But guess what happens? If you do it anyway, you feel the pump, you work through it, what ends up happening? Your body adapts, grows stronger, now you're ready for the, the next weight load again. And it won't burn. You do enough times, hey, what, 10 reps used to kill you, now 10 reps is your warm-up. Your mind doesn't like that pain either. When you go to do something uncomfortable, your brain goes, ah! Oh my God, you're not going to go talk to this guy. And then guess what happens? Everything that's ever happened to you in your life has, is embedded deeply in your brain. It is. We just have, like Fred says, he goes, you know, memory recall difficulties. There's no good or bad memory. I mean, no one has a bad memory. You just have a, a bad ability to access your memory. So it's all in there. So a lot of times why some people are shy, they go, well, you know, I'm shy. And, you know, I don't like talking to strangers. Here's why. Because when you were five years old, you went to go talk to a stranger in a supermarket and your mom slapped you on and said, don't talk to strangers. You don't do that. So your brain felt pain, you got reprimanded by someone that loved you, and all of a sudden, link, ouch, pain is associated with talking to strangers. Now does it hurt to talk to a stranger? Does it hurt? Has anyone like just approached someone and then like you, like if somehow physical damage occurred to your body? You know, you just said, hey, how's it going? And you're like, ow, oh God, like you had a shock collar or something. Has that ever happened to anyone? No. You know, but, but pain, it's all in your brain, right? It's in your brain. So guess what ends up happening? You have all of these links throughout your life that affect you every single day of your life. Everything. You go to talk to that you know, beautiful young lady over here and you say, oh my gosh, you know, I want to go approach that girl. You know, I'm single, she's standing there, you know, same thing, she's in the supermarket, I want to go talk to her. But you look at her, she's like, man, she's so beautiful, I want to go talk to her. But you know what? All of a sudden you remember, man, I talked to a beautiful girl when I was 10 years old, and that girl, you know, told me, no, you're ugly and have cooties. <laughs> you created a link. And you go, oh God, talking to beautiful girls, it hurts, because that hurt my emotions. So maybe you did that a couple times, maybe you got rejected a few times, now you're scared to death to do that thing. If you ever run across people that have got unbelievable confidence, here's why. They developed stories where they had experiences that ended up being positive. Now they've got pleasure linked to doing the thing. So let me share with you how you can now create positive links for every area of your life. You ready for this? This is how you're going to crush through fear, be able to approach anyone, increase your confidence, and you're going to be an absolute animal in the marketplace and in everything you do. You ready for it? Yeah. What you have to do is, whenever you see that situation, what happens is your brain starts to violently puke all over you. You know, you want to go pro prospect that person. All right, I remember when I prospected this one gentleman, you know, he was, uh, you know, driving an Escalade and I was in a crappy little Saturn that had a crack in the front fender. He was dressed up. I was dressed down on the way to the gym. I was wearing a cutoff shirt. All right. Now, he looked successful. He was on talking on the cell phone and he was on the phone. He's busy. So I saw him. My brain goes, Ooh, that guy looks pretty sharp. You should go talk to him. And then all of a sudden my brain goes, no! The weakness spoke up, started to puke. He's on the cell phone. You didn't interrupt him. That's rude. You can't do that. You know, and I can't do that now. And he's walking in the other direction. You can't interrupt someone to order that. You just look weird. You know, oh, plus he's driving an Escalade and you're driving a little crappy car. Hey, he's dressed up and you're dressed down. It isn't going to work. You're not good enough. You can't talk to that guy. All that stuff happens literally in seconds, like milliseconds. You don't even know what's going on. Your brain just gets this surge. It's this rush. It's just, that's what it sounds like. Everyone go, that's the sound of your puke. So then here's what ends up happening. Here's what ends up happening. The only way you can interrupt that pattern of thinking is by asking yourself a different question. If you want different results, simply ask different questions. The question that I've come up with, which has absolutely changed my life, is what would I do if I was 10 times bolder? Because what's happening is, when the minute you ask that question, you interrupt all of the puke, because your brain can't maintain those multiple, it can't answer a question while also uh, 
talking and puking on you, right? <laughs> so what happens is, the minute you're puking, it's going, you can't do this, and then it's not appropriate. Oh, so she's saying, wait, 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 what would I do if I was 10 times bolder? And then all of a sudden, you ask the question, your brain comes up with an answer. It goes, well, if you were 10 times bolder, you'd go interrupt that guy's cell phone conversation. You'd walk over there, you'd say something, interrupt the cell phone conversation. 10 times bolder, you'd tell him to hang up the phone. You'd, <laughs> you, you would say, hey, listen, can you hang that up? I got something important to talk to you about. You'd do that. Regardless of what car you're driving, regardless of how you're dressed or what car he's driving, you'd interrupt him and you'd go ahead and ask him if he keeps his options open or whatever it is you want to say. So guess what? The minute you interrupt that pattern, you get your aha moment. So everyone snap, and then pop. That's a pattern interrupt. And you're creating emotion. You're crea changing your physiology. So what I do is anytime I get in a situation, say, hey, what would I do if I was 10 times bolder? You'd go up and you'd talk to him. Aha, got it. Boom, I'll do it. I got it, I'll do it. I got it, I'll do it. Answer, action. Answer, action. So the minute you encounter any opportunity where you feel fear, anxiety, indecision, any other disease attitude, you say, what would I do if I was 10 times bolder? Well, I'd walk right up over there. What would I say? I don't know, but I'd find out. I got about 10 steps before I get to them. I'll figure it out. Because it's not about the strategy, it's about the state, and it's about the story. So you know what? I walked over to him. He's my all-time top producer, Jeremiah Barnett. Absolutely. See, this is, not, this is not a business thing, this is a life thing. If I was to ask the husbands and the wives and the people that are married and you found your dream spouse, if I said, how did you meet them? Well, you probably saw them, you laid eyes on them, they were probably like, oh man, this person's gorgeous or whatever the case is. You're like, man, so you got a fork in the road. I could go ahead and, you know, let the weakness puke on me. You can't do that, it's not probably, it probably has a boyfriend anyway. Or you could go, hey, what would I do if I was 10 times bolder? Well, I just go up there and say something. I just try. Just see what happens. And guess what? That's how a lot of husbands have met their wives. That's how a lot of wives have met their husbands. Matter of fact, I'll challenge you if you reflect back in your life, everything that's probably good in your life came from a bolder moment. How many people would agree by show hand, by show by a round of applause, how many people would agree? <laughs> right? So I got to thinking, I said, you know, why doesn't my team produce more? Why don't they, why are they so fearful? Well, you know something? They don't know about the pattern interrupt. They don't know about that, but let me educate them. And I said, you know something? It's one thing to educate them, it's one thing to motivate them, but hey, 90% of people will hear it and they'll go, that's a great idea, Caesar, and they'll do it for that day. Or they'll do it one time, and they'll maybe not get that exact result that they were hoping for. Then they get scared and they go, oh my God, oh, that was uncomfortable, I don't wanna do it again. So you need perpetual coaching, you need perpetual training. You wanna increase your confidence, you need to constantly feed yourself personal development. You need to constantly put yourself in that situation. If you work out one time and it burns and you quit, do you ever grow? No, you just said, ooh, that hurt and that was painful, I don't wanna do it again. So here's what you do. Constantly do it. Look for opportunities that challenge you and constantly walk into them. That, listen, guys, I was fearful too. I was. I didn't have any story to lean on. It's the reason why so many people, some people come in here like Jennifer and Amy and so many other success stories, and you know something? They come in with a tremendous amount of confidence. Why? Because they have a great story. They say, hey, listen, my story is I'm successful. I'm a top real estate person. I'm a top insurance person. I'm a top mortgage person. So here's my story. I'm a stud. Prepaid? Psh, I'm going to get in this thing and crush it. Do you think then that affects their state? They're stronger in their everyday approaches. They say the same words as you and me, but their state is better. Their chest is up. They're confident. So people listen. So then th what does that do? That feeds the story, increases the state even more, and they become superstars. They, they're like rocket ships on the way to the moon. Everyone goes back, wow. I didn't have the story. I created the story. I'm here to tell you you can create your own story. And I got to think and I said, how do I feed, how do I get per per perpetual training to everyone that I want to deliver this message to? Because I genuinely believe it's a secret to success. You know, moving into your fears, conquering your fears, not letting fear rule your life. So I said, you know something? What would I do if I was 10 times bolder? And then I thought, you know, what I'd do is I'd get little wristbands. Constant little reminders. Many of you guys in the room are, sh are wearing them. Who's got a band on now? By show of hands, you can see some people in the room. They've been to another one of my trainings and they've seen them. It says B10X, B on it. I've got wristbands and then I've got the power bands. We've seen those, you know, the power balance bands that you can see, you know, all over. You see a lot of like, you know, if you just watch the NBA championship, you know, you, I mean, you see all these basketball players wearing them. You know, they do some things with your energy field and I'm, I'm not gonna get into all that. The bottom line is it's got the logo on it. 
and you know, it's kind of like the what would Jesus do? You look at it and the situation, you go, what would Jesus do? Well, you know, I'd be like this. Well, what this is, B10XB, what would I do if I was 10 times bolder? It will change your life. I can promise you, I thought I was bold before. Before I got the bands, I thought I was bold. I had no idea how chicken I really was. Just putting it out there. Since wearing the band, I'll see an opportunity. I'll see someone that looks sharp. And what it does is it constantly reminds me, I call them perpetual coaching bands. Because they serve as a perpetual coach to walk. Like if, if, I could walk on your sh if I could walk behind you every single day and say, ooh, there's an opportunity, go. How strong do you think you'd be and how fast? Right? So guess what? The reason people don't do things like this is they associate pain, they associate pain with getting out of their comfort zone and pleasure with staying in it. So here's how you change that link psychologically. You wear the bands and whenever you're in a situation, you say, hey, what would I do if I was 10 times bolder? And whatever your brain comes up with, whatever your brain comes up with, you do it. Right, first answer, got it, I'll do it, and you're moving. Motion creates emotion, you gotta get moving as soon as you think of it. Now, if you don't do the thing, if you see the person, you go, oh, man, that's a sharp person. You know, I was talking to Trey, um, and you know, Trey got the band, and uh, you know, he told me, he said, man, these things work. I was going into my dorm room, right, and I saw these two guys, and I was like, nah, you know, because here's what we do. The story's always pretty, right? The story's never like, oh, I'm scared. The story's like, eh, you know, they're probably not interested and they're walking that way and yeah, that's not appropriate. And, and, and look, they don't even look that sharp anyway. Right? <laughs> right? Because <laughs> we have to soothe our subconscious mind, so we say things like that. So guess what? He, but then he walked and he looked at his band. Well, what would I do if I was 10 times bolder? And he goes, oh, man. If I was 10 times bolder, I'd go talk to him. So guess what he did? Everyone say, about face. About face. And he went and did it. Now, it's not the, the, what happens as a result of the bolder moment is not what's relevant. What's relevant is that you stepped into your fear, that you created another link, that you developed more confidence for yourself. And every time you do that, you're pumping weights, you're pumping weights. And then what happens is after a while, you create a new story for yourself. You go, man, I could go up and I could talk to anyone, it's nothing. Now if you don't do it, what you do is you stretch it back, <laughs> real good like this, and you go, pop, and it'll sting. And you'll go, whoo! But guess what will happen? Now you have created a subconscious link. Now you have new neuro associations with pain and pleasure. Now you view an opportunity where you could have been bolder and you didn't take it, you all of a sudden associate that to pain. So if you do that enough times, what happens is you see the moment, you have the opportunity, you don't do it, and you go, don't doing it equals pain, uh, and you go do it. After a while, you don't even need to snap the band. You've done it enough times where just like you don't realize the reason you're scared to approach someone is because you got rejected 10 times when you were in middle school and your mom said this and this happened and the pretty girl told you no. Just like you don't realize it now, your brain isn't gonna realize that the reason you're doing the bolder moment is because you're afraid of the snap. It's just there. It's just there unconsciously. So you see the moment, you go, I'm going to do it. And you're off and moving.